Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Gerard. This is our Wellness Center. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about practical application of Yoga Nidra. Now, this is not the purest and most traditional way of looking at Yoga Nidra practice because one of the things that I'm going to cover right away is people who are practicing yoga nidra as a method for uh, coping with some type of sleeplessness. They may uh, have had problems with sleep deprivation uh, and they're just, they just need to get to sleep. So here's an example. They take medication. Maybe they take medication to get to sleep because medication is maybe the only way they can get to sleep. Now what happens is they wake up. It could be noises. It could be they're just light sleepers anyway. It could be that they worry. So worrying, that definitely wakes a lot of people up. And the problem is they're awake and now they can't get back to sleep. Okay. Before you go to bed, one of the things that you might want to do is have a bedtime routine. So you might want to practice some postures before you go to sleep. Also, some other things. There's nothing wrong with the concept of a sound bath. So what am I talking about? It's like you could use an app or you could use YouTube, but there are recordings where you have waves or rain or other noises. Some people use a fan. They use a fan right next to their bed and it has that steady noise or vibration and that helps them get back to sleep. Now, there's another point to mention too, and that is worrying. It's easy for me to lecture people and say, you should worry. Um, it's no good. What did worry ever accomplish and all that? The problem is everyone worries, even people who know that worrying does not solve anything. Imagine that you could spend your life worrying and not accomplish anything and not learn anything from it. The only way you can learn anything from worrying is by putting it down on paper and start to actually work on a solution. We're not doing that. We're trying to get back to sleep. So what do we do? One is, and this is something that I mention to my students all the time, your problems, write them down. All the ones that you think you're going to worry about tonight, write them down on a piece of paper, put them at the kitchen table and leave them there. By you writing them down, you know what your problems are. You'll be dealing with them tomorrow. And possibly somehow or another, you may wake up with some solutions over the course of your sleep. That does happen where people wake up and say, Eureka, I, I really do know the answer or the solution for that particular problem. That's what uh, ultimately we'd like to have happen is to be able to find solutions for problems that we worry about. Now, as far as causes of worry for nowadays, there's so many things that anyone could worry about depending on where you live and depending on what you do. You know, anything, it could be your job, it could be where you live, it could be um, the economy, it could be COVID, it could be anything. So my point is you're, you're not going to make every potential worry evaporate from your mind or from reality. But what you can do is list them, work on them, not during sleep. Now, if, like I said, if it happens and you're in deep sleep and you're dreaming about a solution, 
God bless you, because sometimes you wake up and you have an answer. So with all that in mind, this is more or less not a traditional use. I'm sure the ancient yogis were not sitting around thinking, how do I use yoga nidra to get back to sleep? They were basically, I would imagine, trying to focus on that twilight area between sleep and meditation. And now you have a bunch of different ways where every night is a potential yoga nidra experience. And why not make the most out of it? So one of them is that what we try to do is make sure that when we wake up in the middle of the night, we do get back to sleep because you do need your sleep. Sleep deprivation is very bad for your health. So with that in mind, I wish you farewell. Namaste.